Ford Focus 2012 to 2018 dual clutch automatic transmission. Transmission removal and clutch and fork replacement. And I'll give you tips for reinstalling the transmission. But I'm in a time crunch and I can't record the full reinstallation. But it's the reverse removal and it's straightforward. All right. Don't be don't be uh, nervous about this. This is exactly the same as a stock gearbox with a different lid. So it's the same thing, the procedure for you. Seven millimeter clamp. You'll have an upper flap on here too to get off. Sorry for any fingers in the camera. Like I said, I'm kind of in a hurry. This is my own personal uh, Ford Focus, and I'm doing this on it before I go home today. Crazy, huh? <laughs> uh, let's see. That's my middle name. Crazy. Try to get on all this on camera. I'm going to slow down a little bit so you can focus on this. I'm just flicking up the impact there to get the nuts out of the thread so I can pull this out faster. <clears throat> Alrighty. Once you get to this point, you're going to want to pull any wiring retainers off right here and here. Get, the, get this ready to be taken out. I've been excited about doing this video for a while. Kind of upset that I'm in a hurry. It'll be all right. These four nuts out of the way. All right, get this vent out of the way. Uh, if I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. That's the vent for the transmission. Get you a cat claw. Take the shifter cable off the lever. Done. Take your 10 millimeter bolt off here. Get this air thing out of here. That's the technical term for it, air thing. No, it's not. It's a, a air damper or silencer or something for the air box. I'm not quite sure, but that's not why we're here today. <laughs> All right, next take your 10 millimeter bolts off, holding the shifter cable down to the transmission. Yeah, the threads are bird. Great. <laughs> that one's good. Pull your shifter cable out, out of the way here, underneath the hoses. Up the way over here. Next, you're going to want to uh, get your shifter cable out of the hook here. Done. Next, you're going to want to locate your three upper bell housing bolts. One of them's down in there. Uh, right there, see it? Right there. There's one there, one down in there, and one down in there. Those are the three bolts which connect the transmission to the engine. Upper bell housing bolts. Oof, license plate. All right, let me 
just go ahead and get the socket on there. And your extension. Get your impact. What the heck? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, I have nobody to blame but me on that one. This is my car. And it fell off the bolt. Woohoo! <laughs> I think my problem is I used that impact to put this bolt on last time I had this out. Okay, next bell housing bolt is right, uh, right there. Got it. Put it on. All right. Get that bolt out of there your uh, third bell housing bolt. The one that you actually saw this is the one I'm getting now. If I can reach it. <laughs> there we go. There's no reason for those to be that darn tight. <laughs> okay, where did that socket go? Did you, did you see where it went? There it is. Okay. All right, bolt. Okay. Next, get your upper TCM connector disconnected. Get that up out of the way. My back hurts. Okay. So, if you're at home and you're doing this with a Jack and Jack stands, do. All right, if you're doing this with the Jack and Jack stands, do not take this off yet. If you're doing this on the lift, support the bottom of the engine with, from the oil pan with a block of wood. Lower it down on the wood. Remove this bolt in the mount and then lift it up. But if you're on a doing this at home, just don't take this bolt out yet. All right, you see the engine raise up there? Stop. Your 18 millimeter on the trans mount out of the way. Oh boy. Okay. Bolt's in good condition. Trans mount out. You may consider replacing that mount and that mount while you're in here. They're known issues, especially this one. Okay, I'm ready to lift up the car. There's the block of wood I used. All right, stop about right here. Go ahead and uh, remove both of your front wheels. All right, take on both sides in the front, take this bolt off, holding your hose onto the uh, strut, both sides. All right, both sides are disconnected there. At this point, you can raise the vehicle up the rest of the way. Um, if you're using a lift, go ahead and get your uh, get a tripod and raise the engine up about level. If you're at home and you didn't take the mount out on top, you don't need to do this yet. Don't worry about supporting anything yet. Okay, but anyway, go ahead and get PB Blaster or some sort of penetrating oil. Spray the top of the ball joints in there. Get it nice and wet on both sides. With a hex 8mm bolt, go ahead and remove your drain plug. Drain the fluid out of the transmission. All right, while it's draining, go ahead and remove your ball joint pinch bolt nut. That's a Torx 55 head and an 18 millimeter nut on the other side. Remove both sides. Fantastic. Good job. You're doing great. Um, whoever's doing it, you, you are. Okay, to get your ball joints out once the hardware's out, long pry bar into the hole here. This direction, pull down. If you have issues, hammer right here while you're pulling down which I have issues position the ball joints aside in this manner go ahead and on both sides put them in the front of the moose knuckle up here and um, get your axle retainer 
this strap right here, two 13 millimeter nuts, remove that. And get a pry, that same pry bar you used a minute ago, pop the axle out. After you pop the axle out, push the knuckle back, get the axle hanging over here. Okay, and once you get the strap out over here, pop the axle out in the same manner, stick it up over above the steering gear. A little something like that, a little something like that. Next, go ahead and come up here. Oh boy, that's sunny. <laughs> Okay, so here's the, um, there's the axle hole, here's the transmission, follow the transmission, oh my goodness. Okay, there we go, perfect. You get these two bell housing bolts, buy the catalytic converter, remove them, leave them in there, but back them all the way out. Um, and once again, that is on the top of the transmission here next to the catalytic converter. Okay. I've got those two back bolts out. All right, there you go, see? Next, come forward here. Disconnect your sending unit right here. Okay. Uh, get this uh, ground disconnected. It's a 13 millimeter nut, and then get that 13 millimeter stud behind it. All right, y'all. Okay, I got that nut and stud off here, got the ground hanging out of the way, and I went ahead and took these two lower bell housing bolts out too. Hey guys, can you help me uh, get to a thousand subscribers, please? Can you mind subscribing? I've got over a hundred videos for cars and power sports and stuff you might like. Next, go ahead and get the two 13 millimeter studs off that hold the starter on. There's one up here. Up here. I promise you, yeah, there it is. You can see it. You may have a little sh metal shield on with 10 millimeter nuts. Go ahead and take that off and throw it away. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Got the two studs out for the starter. Go ahead and grab the back of it. Ow! And um, with your right hand and, and push it all around. And uh, before you can do anything else, um, you're going to have to remove this bolt and this bolt. Okay, there's those two bolts I just had you take out of that lower mount there. The uh, white bolt goes in it, goes vertically, uh, it goes in it, and the black bolt goes through it, horizontally. Don't mix them up or you'll have a vibration. Okay, with that mount disconnected, you'll have the, ooh, blurry, you'll have the room to uh, get the starter to swing out of the way. Something like that, right in front of the oil filter. Go ahead and reach your hand up in here where the starter was. Pull your little uh, black grommet out. It goes in with the two notches facing toward the transmission. Next, get a ratchet with a 21 millimeter socket. Put it on the crankshaft. Oh, ow, oh. and if I can do it. <laughs> All right, just like that. Turn the engine over. There are six clutch nuts. You're gonna need a six inch extension with a wobble and a mid deep 13. Um, the clutch nuts are located on the clutch. It fastens it to the flywheel. See the flywheel, see the rings? The nuts are on this side. They're 13 millimeter and you're going to have to turn the engine over to uh, access all six of them a little bit at a time, okay? This is what I'm using to get the clutch nuts out. Six inch extension, wobble three eighths, and a mid-deep 13. All right, I have all six clutch nuts off and in the garbage. Uh, folks at home, go ahead and get your get a floor jack and uh, support the bottom of the engine on the oil pan with a block of wood. And uh, Remove your upper transmission mount up there that you held off on, that you didn't uh, take off. And uh, yeah, uh, people at work, just keep doing what I'm doing here and get ready to get your transmission jack. Folks at home, I recommend uh, Harbor Freight has a transmit, uh, transmission jack that's such, sort of set up like a floor jack, um, but it's designed for transmissions. I recommend that along with a floor jack to support the engine here. 
I am once again asking for your subscription support. Please feel free to <laughs> feel free to click that subscribe button. I'm sorry to be pushy. I'm really not trying to be that way. Uh, um, it's my dream, and it's been my dream for years to make money on YouTube, and I love helping people out with stuff like this. Um, I know there's a lot of transmission issues with these, and I want to help people save thousands of dollars and do it themselves. Okay, I'm getting the uh, trans. Okay, so if you've got this type of transmission jack with the fingers that slide out, and there's a little pocket in the transmission that fits perfectly in. Get you, there you go. More clear picture there. This uh, finger is going to go right up about where this clutch motor is, and this one should fit about flush with the case here. So I need to tilt it forward and go up. Okay. All right. Take your last two bell housing bolts off right here and here, and proceed at your own risk as transmissions are heavy. All right, those two bolts are out. I'm going to go ahead and lower this down a little bit. And uh, grab the TCM, just sort of jiggle it like that. Turn this, uh, get the front of the uh, transmission like that a little more. Just enough to lower down. Start lowering the uh, transmission down. All right, I did too much there. Let's go back the other way. Okay, it's catching up there, so go up a little bit, lower this down. Lower the engine down is what I'm doing. Okay, it's starting to clear. Oh, it's mining again. No problem. Okay, stop what, you, stop what you're doing. Um, come back here, you're gonna have this issue too, so pay attention. Uh, let's see this right here. Uh, get that out of the way. That is your lower mount bracket, or your lower mount, I'm sorry. Just get that all the way where it's not touching this. Okay, and that should be the last step. Don't, uh, if you feel too much slop in it, put a little more support on so the engine mount doesn't get hurt. All right, I'm gonna have to pull this transmission forward. Okay, sometimes you just gotta manhandle things. Be careful, don't uh, pinch any wires, such as this right here. Don't break that. See how it's tilted too much this way? Bring it back up a little so it doesn't fall. And continue lowering it down. Okay, you might scrape the axle a little. That's not going to hurt it. This is a good chance to uh, just blow some of the clutch debris off of the edge here. The, least, uh, the less you have to clean up, the better. <laughs> Uh, at this point, I like to reach up in here, make sure this uh, one of the holes for the clutch stud is still lined up for when I go back in. Okay, next go ahead and get your transmission on a table facing upward. Excuse me one moment. All right, I just pulled the TCM off because I'm actually swapping transmissions out today. Um, but I'm, it's going to be no different for you for a clutch job. So uh, we'll be showing you how to do the clutch. So it's not going to be any difference. I'll make sure of that. I lied. Let me take that bracket off real quick.
first thing you're going to want to do here is get this uh, snap ring off right here holding the hub on. These snap rings are all one time use. And that little hub comes with a new clutch. Uh, so the next thing, get this uh, snap ring out here. That is a very dirty, oily pair of snap ring pliers. Squeeze it. And um, that went flying. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so next. All right, next I have my custom device here. If you want measurements or anything on this, let me know. Uh, get two nuts and hold it down on there. And uh, with a pry bar here and a pry bar here, everywhere a pry bar, I mean, just pop up evenly on both sides with the pry bars and the clutch will come right out. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I did just drop my phone in transmission fluid, so I'm, I'm accepting donations for the Big Ben Gets a New Phone Foundation. No, I'm just kidding. slave cylinder, two Z washers on it, inspect for blue grease, oh, oh no, oh, I, uh, slave cylinder's bad, okay, <laughs> it's leaking blue grease, so, okay, here's your clutch forks, how they work is, the TCM sends a signal to the actuator, the actuator turns and holds the clutch um, actuator fork here. When the, once again, when the motor turns, it rotates this, which moves this up and applies the clutch. And as long as the actuator is continually supplying voltage without a problem, that's going to hold the clutch fork up and apply the clutch. If the fork malfunction or the, if the motor malfunctions, it's going to lose uh, its holding force and drop that down for a second, possibly while you're driving. Okay, so these are invert inverted torques holding these to on right here. You need to remove those on both forks. And these are torques 45, I believe, holding this down right here on both of them. So this is regular torques and this is inverted torques. You gotta remove them both. And uh, do keep in mind, these are inverted torques E8 here. You're gonna have to remove the actuators and slide them out of the way before you can get the forks out. And uh, if you have any questions about the, where the forks go, the wider fork right here goes on the top A clutch uh, actuator, which is the top of the transmission with the vent and all that. This is the bottom. The wider one goes on the top. I'm going to pull this out. Okay, I've got the actuators out. I've got the hardware loosened. and get these uh, silver bolts out of here that hold the forks down to the case. Set them aside in your pile of bolts there. And, uh, okay. There's the A fork. And here's the B fork. Take a look if your dowel pins are still in there or not. And uh, note-take that. Alrighty. Check your input shaft seals for leakage. They should be the orange type. If they're black, replace them. There's another one underneath here. Torx 30 screws on those. All right, if they're orange like this, then you're good to go. <sighs> All right, I just got my $160 slave cylinder there. Uh -huh. Um. So anytime you're coming in here for a transmission repair, uh, replace the forks and the slave cylinder and the clutch. I don't care what Uncle Jim Bob says. <laughs> Okay, that sounds rude, um, but no, it'll save you time and hassle in the future and labor to cost if you're having someone do this, so. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my new forks. Now, like I said, this is, uh, I'm just swapping transmissions. These are my old forks, but um, when you get your new forks, you're gonna have a shipping um, 
item, a little piece of metal that you're gonna have to fold and slide out right here. Take, make sure you take that out, or you won't have any engagement with the transmission when you when you go to drive it. <laughs> um, I, one moment. Stop. Don't forget your uh, shim here. Okay. Make sure that's sitting evenly and tighten all the bolts down. I cannot find my screws for that shim thing I just showed you, and I'm stressing out out because it is time for me to go home and this is my transmission in my car that I am going to be driving home today. Therefore I need to find these screws and I can't find them. Okay back in action again. I'm going to get my fork. Drop it down in here. Like I said I won't be um, showing reinstallation today. All right you'll feel it drop on the dowel pin. I won't be install showing reinstallation of the transmission today due to time constraints, but I will give you tips and advice. And mainly that involves, well, that just involves the uh, torquing of the clutch nuts. Okay, so there's six clutch nuts. The first thing you want to do is turn the engine, when the transmission's in the car with the new clutch, turn the engine over about eight times to make sure the clutch is set properly against the flywheel. Uh, otherwise, you'll have vibrations, and um, you don't want vibrations. So the second thing you're going to want to do is once you've turned the engine over eight times and the clutch feels nice and smooth against the flywheel, you can grab a stud and just clunk, clunk, clunk like that, and it's not bound up. Go ahead and run down your first clutch nut, snug, not tight, but pretty snug. Um, and, uh, it's a bird. Alright, good thing for spare parts. Okay, the first one you get snug, the first clutch nut, and then turn the engine over and skip a stud for the clutch, snug down in the clutch nut, skip another stud, and snug that one down, and then you're going to want to skip uh, a whole set, so like three of them. And um, go ahead and that'll be an empty uh, stud. Run down the nut, full, t full tightening torque. I'm going to say, I think it's 18 foot pounds. I don't remember for sure though. But And then after that, just one by one, 18 foot pounds all the way around. And you're good there. And that's literally everything I have to tell you as far as reinstallation. It's the reverse of removal. And uh, that's the only tips I can come up with there for you. So I'm going to go ahead and get these... Uh, bolts the rest of the way in here for the forks. Start them by hand. And um, when you go to tighten the uh, spring bolts here, uh, do it evenly. Don't, don't just tighten one all the way down. Just get one about halfway, this one halfway. Go a little more, a little more, a little more. And uh, be sure that one of these lines are uh, on each side are lined up with a little hump right here on that fork. You'll see it. A little hump. Because there's a little hump on the actual spring bolt housing itself. So, Okay, your new forks and all that should come with little packets of grease. So just put a little bit on the tips of the forks here. Right about there. Okay. Wait for that to focus a little bit. Inspect your new uh, slave cylinder here. Make sure everything's together properly. Sometimes these little tangs are broken, but this is good. Okay. Sometimes you see how it doesn't go down right there. You need to rotate it 180 degrees. It falls down. Take your bigger washer. Put it down on the bottom there. Make sure it's about even here. Take your smaller one and uh, right there, and make sure they're both about even with one another, and we're good. Now I'm going to go ahead and unbox my new clutch. And there it is. Go ahead and lift it up in there. Line it up with the shaft. Okay. Take your uh, special service tool 3000 off the clutch. And 
take your your actual special service tool, clean it off, and um, <laughs> try to find a okay. Like this, there you go. Stick it on here. And if I can look at my hammer, there is my hammer. Okay. Put your uh, snap ring in here, the smaller of the two. Ooh, darkness. Okay. Make sure. The snap ring is like this, where the uh, angles of the uh, snap ring are slanted like that. You can sort of, there, there you go, put it down like that. Okay, I'm going to need both hands. Stretch the snap ring out with those pliers, um, snap ring pliers, and pop it down. You will need to hammer it down to pop it fully all the way around with your special service tool. And check to make sure it's fully seated all the way around and it is and I'm going to take my brand new hub here which came with the clutch get the white mark right here about 90 degrees and, and uh, line it up there we go and with my new snap ring here the uh, the uh, indent is actually right here about where the circle is, so you're going to want to line it up with the indent. See? Right there. Get the open ends of the snap ring there. Okay. Next, you're going to want to uh, unlock your clutches, and you will need a special service tool 3000 for that. This is a custom uh, tool here. Um, the actual service tool will look like this on the end. It splines with the clutch forks. And uh, you rotate counterclockwise about 10 times, and you'll hear the clutches unlock. They'll click. Next, you can bolt your actuators up. Get a little bit of grease on the splines in there. I cannot seem to find my grease. One moment. Okay, now you can get the actuators in. You may need a jig one like that. Alright, that one's in. go home it's Friday night
that uh, concludes what I'm going to show you here. You're ready to go back in with the clutch. You'll need to use Forescan or Ford IDS to do an adaptive learn on the clutch, touch point learn. Other than that, good luck to you. Please subscribe. Have a great day. And I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions, let me know below or join our Facebook or Discord group. All right. Take care now.